Hi friends and welcome back to Gardening Suburbia. My name is Amanda and we are in my backyard planting a whole bunch of stuff. Um, my computer totally killed itself. Um, I've had the computer for many, many years and it's like a 2011 refurbished computer. Um, it decided it was done. <laughs> so I was in the middle of editing a video and it decided to poop on me. So that's why a video is a little later than it usually is. Um, but I am out in my backyard. I'm getting some things planted and hopefully here in the next few days, week, I will have a new computer to do my editing on because um, currently I have nothing to really edit on. So I went ahead and I got my cattle panel trellis up. This guy is actually two eight foot long panels that I went ahead and zip tied together um, to make my trellis because if you're going to be doing a cattle panel, you need a 16 foot or if you have limited space in like a vehicle, eight feet, two of them, works perfect. Um, I do realize that my zip ties are not gonna last very long just because they are not UV zip ties, but I did three rows. I like overlapped them and I zip tied on three different diagonals here. So these guys will have plenty enough stability to keep them locked in for at least this season. Um, I may have to upgrade it next season. That's perfectly okay. This is gonna get me through the year because I do not have a truck. There's no way I'm getting a 16 foot long panel unless it gets delivered to my house by someone who loves me very much or um, from some service. So, but we got a cattle panel and it's so exciting because I have double arches. Let me walk this way. I have my little gothic cathedral type pointed archway and then I have this big glorious huge cattle panel archway which I think is just going to be I can't wait for these guys to be filled with flowers and food I think for that back one I'm going to do sweet peas I think I have a royal red sweet pea which is a flower um, that you can use to harvest and I'm going to put that on that trellis just because I think I decided that this bed right here let me squat down this bed right here i think is going to be my um cut flower bed i'm gonna get ready to plant my dahlia tubers for miss amy at west wind flower farm super excited about those those are beyond ready to get out of the bag and i think this bed is gonna be either tomatoes or peppers and i think i think i might do tomatoes in that bed just because I think that the bed that gets the best sunlight in my garden is going to be this uh, brick bed down here so all that to say we're in the garden we're planting stuff we're having a good time it's beautiful outside I went ahead and well I signed up for a 10k this is my second year well not back to back but my second year of doing a 10k here in cincinnati we have the flying pig which sounds so bizarre but it is our city's thing um and so we have this really awesome community of people that come together and we just you do the best you can um so i did a 10k with my sister this morning got up bright and early at 5 30 well five five in the morning and ran a race six miles got it done and now I'm here planting in my garden and it has been a beautiful day and I am super excited to get so much of this stuff in the ground. I also have my box of seeds. Oh, let me clean off my camera. I have my box of seeds. I brought it out and then I also brought out my gardening journal. I got this at my Target or something, but this is just my basic layout of my garden. I went ahead and made like post-it notes cut out to be similar to that of the green stocks layouts. Um, I do have one more green stock, but I'm going to be filming a video of that so you guys can follow along. Um, he is currently in my garage, but I have the two um, green stocks that I just purchased this year. I got an original and then I also got a leaf. So the original has a deeper pocket, which you can kind of see in this 
This one has a deeper pocket versus this guy has a shorter pocket. So these ones are perfect for things that have a deeper root system like tomatoes and peppers. So that one I think is gonna be my tomato green stock and I'm super excited about that because it's not gonna be just dwarf tomatoes, which I do have a dwarf tomato. He's poking up over there. Dwarf tomato or not, I'm gonna put some indeterminate tomatoes that are big and glorious and get <laughs> really full and that thing's gonna be a monster. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then this is the first green stock that I had and it's got some sweet peas currently in it. Um, some lettuces at the top and I just realized, I don't know if you guys can see these, these little red ant things. I, I can't remember what the name of them are, but if you just like hose this off with water, they literally just fall off. But they will put little holes in your plants if you're not careful. So I need to get this hosed off. But I'm rambling again. Back to this. So I went ahead and got these guys laid out. I'm gonna go ahead and use these as a diagram to know where I'm planting things. So I've got my tomato green stock named here with the different tiers. Got bottom, top layer, and then I'll figure out how to orient it. But I'll probably put it like a uh, uh, like a tag in one of the pockets just to orient it. Um, and then I have my medicinal stock. Um, so I'm going to put all of my medicinal herbs. I have my list right here of all the medicinal herbs. Some of these will not be ideal for planting in the green stock. Um, like the gobo burdock is a root that you harvest. So it needs a really good space for the root system to grow. So it won't be ideal for putting in the green stock. This is an experiment. I've never grown medicinal herbs and I've never grown medicinal herbs in a green stock. Um, so it's going to be fun. We're gonna learn together. Um, on this side, I have a really, I haven't updated this recently, but I have a basic idea of all of my planting spaces um, and kind of what things are. Um, but this is this is gonna be my godsend, my, my savior. This is gonna tell me where things are and what is what. Um, but there are a few containers that I need to add because as you can see, I have acquired quite a few more containers over this past few days. <laughs> well, not days, sorry, past few months, I have acquired more containers. So, um, the brassicas are doing well though. The onions look much better. I went ahead and got a few starts um, from Funkies just to fill in some, some spots um, since my onions were less than ideal with their overwintering, but the onions that did survive are looking really, really good. Um, lettuce, minus all of the weeds, but no garden is perfect. I will show you guys my garden, whether it looks like this or not. Um, so we've got our mignette lettuce. I'm super excited for this because this lettuce tastes really good. Um, we've got, uh, what kind of lettuce are you? I think this is the iceberg. Yeah, iceberg lettuce. And then this guy is the bib butterhead. So some of these got pulled by squirrels because they are rude and they dislike me in my garden, um, but some of them survived. This is doing well. I haven't had anything produced quite yet, which is okay. Um, you can actually eat the leaves off of the brassicas. Um, so if I don't get any harvest of broccoli, I'll go ahead and chop up the leaves um, and make like a broccoli salad, but with leaves, um, which is like mayo broccoli salad. I I'll pr try to find a recipe and put it down below. Um, but this is super delicious. It is something to get your gut going. Um, so do be weary of that. Um, but it is, they look beautiful. They, they popped back up real nicely. Um, and I'm excited that they're doing so well. If we get a harvest, it's okay. If not, I've loved having them in my garden to look at nonetheless. So for this bed, um, currently I have a pine straw 
um, that I coated both of these beds with. Um, I've never used this before, but I was wanting to find something that was a little different than hay or straw. Um, and that would break down and put some kind of nutrients back into the soil. Um, and I also wanted to find something that was going to go ahead and lock in the moisture in my beds, especially with these uh, fabric beds, I've noticed that the top of them will dry out a ton. Um, so <laughs> I got some mulch on them to help with that. The, this bed right here is going to be my cut flower bed. So I have all of my dahlia tubers that I got from Miss Amy at West Wind Flower Farm. Um, these could have been planted a while ago. They are definitely ready to be planted. So I've got a couple of varieties of um, dahlia tubers. My, both of my dahlia tubers did not survive. So I had a Seattle Rose. Seattle? I think it was just Seattle. Um, that one died during the winter. I did not water or spritz it with water enough to keep enough moisture in it for it to not dry out. And then my crazy love Dahlia tuber, um, I don't know what happened with it. I, I did put it in a pot to get, um, get it started, but unfortunately it hasn't popped up at all. So I don't know if I'm gonna like check it here in the next few days. I haven't had any green growth on it, um, so I, I think it's a, a dud. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try again this year. I'm gonna do it. I think this year instead of using um, vermiculite, which is what I used last season, um, as like the medium to hold them in over winter, um, I'm gonna use like a seed starting mix that's really nice and fine um, because that's what Amy has here and these little baggies and hers looks so good. I probably will try to get some pointers from her to see what the best um, method of storing these is. Um, so we've got some Dahlia tubers that are in dire need of being planting. Um, our forecast for the next 10 days looks so good at night. It's not gonna get below 40 degrees. And honestly, I think it's gonna get closer to 50 degrees at night, which is like the perfect time to be planting out tomatoes. But of course, none of my tomatoes are ready to be planted out except for the one that I bought from Funkies. Um, so I'm on day three, going on day four of hardening off all of my plants. So I'm just putting out those guys out on my front porch to get some good morning sun or some late afternoon like late, late afternoon sun. Um, I'm trying to get them nice, deep, dark green leaves. Um, plants that are started inside do not have any UV protection just because they've been inside your house the whole time. Um, so you need to like kind of baby them and get them like a base coat. <laughs> they need a little a little tan before you can put them outside and just hope that they, they go. If you went ahead and took that plant from inside where it was getting no UV light and you put it outside, it'd get really severe sun scald or sunburn. The leaves would turn a white or a light yellow um, and the plant might might die. Um, so do what you can to save your plants. Um, give them the best fighting shot, especially since pepper plants, tomato plants, that's six to eight weeks that you baby those plants. You wanna really make sure that you give them a really good fighting chance. Let me ramble on and on. Let's plant some Dahlia tubers. So I have four varieties of Dahlia tubers. I have my Cafe Ole, a Rockstar, um, a Lark's Ebb, which is a super, um, super pretty variegated blend. And then I have a Creme de Cassis, which is a light pink purple blend. So with Amy's um, tubers, she gave a informational card, how to take care of your tubers, how to plant them, how to uh, harvest them in the winter or fall. Um, and then just any other little questions that you might have. So for these, she recommends to plant them 12 inches apart and 46 inches deep. You wanna keep your eyes so the growth pointed upwards um, cause that's your stem. That's where those flowers are gonna grow out of. So where do I wanna put these guys? 
I want to put, mm, so I think these are one foot boxes. I might, I might squeeze them in a little bit. I might squeeze them in just a little bit. I think I'm going to plant them in corners. So one in each corner and then kind of like the opposite so that I get really good bang for my buck. Should I do that? No. I changed my mind. I'm going to plant one per square. Um, and then I'll fill in the spaces with like some kind of drapey plant. So I'm going to put the cafe au lait in this little spot here. I'm going to kind of move my straw to the side. Um, yeah. This soil is so loose since it is so fresh. Um, I did a soil test, which you guys will probably see on my channel here. Um, I'll link it, but the soil looked pretty good. Um, I probably will add, look at that root system. Um, this has a couple eyes, growth eyes. So it's got one, two, three. So we're gonna lay this guy like this, nice, just flat for these eyes to go straight up. Um, I'm going to add some worm castings into each of the holes that I'm planting. So I'm going to go grab that real fast. So I'm just going to use a worm castings. I'm just going to do like a little small handful per, like just a small handful, just to give it a little boost. And then I'm just going to cover those guys up nicely break up any big chunks and that was let's make sure that you label these although I will have this video for reference oh is there another one in there <gasps> Miss Amy <gasps> oh no at least it come to crisis okay I'm just gonna put that soil on there and I think I'm going to just save these bags um, for later use. So that was my cafe au lait. I'm gonna make a tag for that. Make a tag for all of them. And while this is growing, I'm just gonna leave a little opening for this to grow up through so it gets sunlight. So we have all of our labels made so we don't forget things. Um, so we've got cafe au lait right here. I think the creme de cassis would be really pretty right near next to that one. And we'll keep these guys right there in there. So another four to six four to six inch deep hole the legs up it's a real nice happy uh, tuber this is what you get when you buy local versus box stores box stores aren't great with uh, dahlia tubers but you can grow them because that's I bought my tubers from last year at Kroger, of all places. But buying local always feels a little better. So we're gonna do the uh, rock star next. Move this to the side and just dig out a hole. Since this soil is so fresh, it's super easy to dig holes by hand. Okay, got a hole. So there was something that I learned the other day. Um, so if you accidentally snap this guy off, it is okay. 
um, a flower farmer that I was watching snapped it off and she's like, it's fine, it'll still grow. So the fact that this guy, I've kept him in the bag too long, he's not happy with me, um, should be fine. He should regrow this. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and plop him in there. The thing you would worry about is if your tuber body snapped at the neck from where the eye is. So you need an eye, a neck, and then also that body. So the big potato-y looking part. Close that guy up. That one is a our rock star. Okay. And then last but not least is our creme de cassis. I'm so excited for all these Dahlia tubers. Um, What kind of flowers do you guys love to grow? Um, is there a variety or um, a color, as simple as a color that you just love to have in your garden? Um, I'd love to know. Um, last year was my first year of really dabbling into growing flowers, and this year it's, it's grown exponentially, um, which is why I have four different Dahlia tubers varieties that I'm growing this year. Look at all those roots. He's so happy. Um, so creme de cassis, I'm gonna plop him in the hole. Add a little worm castings just to make him happy. And then top her with all of the soil. That is our creme de cassis. Well guys, thank you so much for joining me today. It has been a beautiful day. It looks like we're gonna be getting some good rain. Um, I will probably still water these just a little bit just to get them a good water soaked in. Um, but the rain is coming. If you know that rain is coming, it's a really good time to plant right before, especially like those bigger established plants. Seeds a little, little different. Um, but more established plants, if you can get them planted, it is the perfect time to plant those because then that all of that glorious rainwater is just gonna come down on those plants and really get them to put roots out um, but thank you guys so much for joining me I'll see you guys in the next one if you want to go ahead and enjoy any of my other content I'll pop a video up here for you guys but until that next time I'll see you then thank you so so much